I remember an old farmer reacting to this parable in our gospel this evening. Ang sabi niya, The sower in the story is not a good farmer. First time kong nakuha yung reaction na yon. Sabi niya, if this man were a good farmer, he would not have allowed some of the seeds to fall on the footpaths and other seeds on the rocky ground or on the soil that is full of weeds. Anong klaseng magsasakayan? A good farmer will not just throw the seeds everywhere. He will begin by preparing the ground first. The sowing comes last. You see, if you do not prepare the soil very well, you will just end up wasting a lot of precious seeds. So what do you do? First, ni hindi mo pwedeng bungkalin kagad yung lupa because matigas. You irrigate the soil first in order to soften it. Then, pwede na siyang bungkalin. You can do the plowing and you can do the weeding and later you can do the fertilizing. Only after you've, after you've done a lot of work for soil preparation, can you start planting the seeds. That way, they have a greater chance of bearing fruit and yielding much fruit or harvest. And ngayon, how do we apply this parable to the work of evangelizing or proclaiming the good news of the kingdom of God productively. Well, you don't start the mission by immediately preaching the Word of God because your audience might not even be disposed to receive the Word of God. Merong ibang passage where Jesus said, you do not throw pearls to the swine. Obvious ba? Aanhin ng mga baboy ang perlas. They do not know what they are worth. You know, the missionaries started with very basic things like learning the language well, getting acquainted with the culture, immersing themselves in the social conditions, building goodwill, identifying key personalities in the community, motivating and dealing with the basic concerns and social issues of the community, etc. In the context of modern chemical-dependent agriculture, pwedeng abundant nga yung harvest, but the produce can be unhealthy, and its effects on nature can be very destructive and unsustainable. Yun ang problema with consumer-driven mass production of agricultural products in modern farming. Ang focus ay yung volume and quantity of the produce rather than on the quality. Obviously, they are after big profits. They do not mind using artificial herbicides to get, to get rid of the weeds, toxic pesticides to get rid of the pests, and a lot of chemical fertilizer. Lahat ng ito, mga add-ons, they increase the cost of production and they also increase the price of the produce. The harvest is abundant but very hazardous to nature. The process abuses the environment. It kills all the insects including the helpful, the helpful ones. Hindi naman lahat ng insect ay peste. Some of them are precisely there to keep an ecological balance. And the overuse of chemical fertilizer destroys the natural fertility of the soil. The soil becomes, as it were, addicted to the chemicals. Now, how do we apply this analogy again to the work of evangelization? Kapag masyado tayong focused on methods and strategies 
on plans and techniques, we will end up with a business enterprise or a church managed like a successful NGO or a corporation, but not a community of disciples in mission for the kingdom of God. Para bang ang agenda hindi na kingdom of God. Ito yung problema with preoccupation with instant success. In the past, there have been instances when missionaries were also tempted to play politics in order to achieve quick results. Some of them, you know, allied themselves with the elite patrons, with the colonizers and political power brokers in order to succeed in what they called their mission. But the faith that is generated is very shallow. The church becomes beholden to the rich and the powerful. She cannot even make a moral stand on social issues. Ito yung trahedya, the tragedy when we lack rootedness in the Word of God. You cannot build a parish by asking all kinds of donation from gambling lords and wetting lords or from corrupt billionaires who will donate a lot and all the funds needed to build a state-of-the-art parish building complete with facilities without involving the community as fellow stakeholders, least of all the poor. Ah, pag ganyan, the poor will never see themselves as the parish. The parish will become the building because it was built with funds that are totally outsourced, walang sense of ownership. You know, I used to wonder why Jesus immediately likened the work of evangelizing to harvesting. Ang tanong ko, whatever happened to the planting? Remember yung passage where he said, the harvest is rich, but the laborers are few. He needs laborers to do the harvesting. Is it possible that the Lord is inviting us only for harvesting because He is presupposing that only those seeds that He Himself had planted are actually worth harvesting. And this reminds me of the psalm that says, Psalm 127, If the Lord does not build the house, then in vain do the builders labor. Pwede nating i-reformulate yon and apply the thought to farming. Parang ganitong dating. If the Lord has not planted the seeds, then in vain do the harvesters labor.